Hello, class. Wanted to remind you that we're currently in the process of trying to make ourselves a 57-card spotted deck. And we have identified this analogy between cards and symbols and points and lines. Namely, we want to be thinking about here the symbols as points in the plane, and the cards as being lines. So each card is a collection of points, uh, or sorry, each card is a collection of symbols in the way that each line is a collection of points. We identified a couple problems with thinking about our traditional plane, which I'm denoting by R2, just the usual Cartesian plane that you've been thinking about since Algebra 1. And so there are two problems here. Uh, one is, well, we want all pairs of spotted cards to intersect in one symbol, but not all lines in the plane intersect. Namely, two parallel lines don't intersect in a point. And also that lines in R2 have too many points. We only want eight. Okay, so we're going to fix problem one today. So our goal, we want to fix up R2 doing as little damage as possible to the properties it already has, but also fix it so that every pair of lines intersect at exactly one point. Namely, one key property we don't want to lose that R2 already has is that every pair of points determine a unique line. One reason for this in addition to the fact that this is one of the most basic things about lines, is that we proved for the 57-card spotted deck, every pair of symbols would have to appear on exactly one card. So this property from geometry, we want to keep. So our problem really is parallel lines. So if I have two lines in R2 that are parallel, they don't intersect. So I sort of mentioned last time I alluded to the fact that what, what we're going to say kind of is that, well, parallel lines intersect at infinity. So one way to frame that is to say, okay, well, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add a point called infinity to this where these two lines intersect. Now, at first, that seems to fix the problem, okay? And I, I'm going to be clear, that's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to add extra points, because we're going to need to add a point where these two lines intersect by adding a point to each of these lines. But this doesn't quite work as is, because if I draw in another set of parallel lines, well, those also have to intersect at some point. But if I only added one point, that is, if I added this infinity, well, these are the same point. So actually, that's saying that this line here and this line here actually intersect both at this point and also at infinity, because this infinity has got to be the same as that infinity if we're only going to have one. So I can't just add one point. In fact, what I need to do is say, okay, if my lines are parallel, well, what does that mean about them? That means they have the same slope. So what I really want to add is I actually want to add a point for each slope. And so if these two lines have slope m, then I want to add a point for them to meet at. Namely, I want to add the point and I could call it infinity sub m, but I really want to emphasize here, the infinity is just a, a symbol. I'm just adding a new point to the plane. So I'm going to call it here happy face sub m. Uh, and then the if these are slope, so if these are slope m and these are slope n, then we go ahead and we add a new point, happy face sub n over here for these two to meet at. And so 
what am I doing here? I'm changing both the set R2, and I'm changing what it means to be a line in R2. Namely, I'm changing what the points on that line are. Okay, so let's, before we say what our new version of a line is going to be, let's just ask, what is a line in R2? Well, a line is a set, I'll call it L, and it is the set of coordinate pairs x, y, where y is equal to mx plus b for, and so for fixed, m and b. So I'm actually going to write a subscript there. So I fix an m and a b, and I get a collection of points. Okay, no big surprise, lines correspond to y equals mx plus b. Uh, you might recall, actually, that this is not all lines. Namely, we also have to think about vertical lines. And so I will also call this L vert A. This is the set of all x, y, such that x is equal to A. And so each line is an infinite collection of points. These are our lines in R2. And so what we have here is we have an ambient set, which all these points come from. And then each line is a subset of that ambient set. And there is one for each M and B, and then one for each A. So here's what we're proposing. We're going to add to R2 a point smiley face sub m for each m in r now why am i doing that i'm doing that so that i can add those points to this line so in this new set uh, that I'm going to call R2 with a hat, or P2 of R. Uh, my lines in this set, I'm going to put a squiggle over them. My line here, it's the set of all pairs x, y, such that y equals mx plus b. But I'm just going to toss in sort of a free bonus, smiley face sub m. So I am adding a point to every line that basically says, hey, I'm the slope of this line. That's all smiley face sub m says. And so if smiley face sub 3 is on a line, all that's telling you is, hey, that line, it has slope 3. Now, you might notice I didn't take care of the vertical lines. And so I'm also going to need to add one more point to take care of those. And so I'm going to call that smiley face subvert. And then we'll get that if I take the analog of my L vert A before, that is my vertical line, it's going to be the set of x, y, where x is A. But then I'm also going to throw in this point, smiley face subvert. So we've added to R2 infinitely many smiley face points, uh, one for each real number. And then we also added one more smiley face uh, for the vertical lines. 
And so now we're done. So as a set, and so this is a definition now. As a set, P2 of R, the projective space over R, the projective plane, what is this? It's R2 union the set of smiley face sub M for M in R union this smiley face sub vert. And so this is the collection of points in my projective plane. Okay, and so we've added a bunch of points, and now we have the property that we can check that now every pair of two of the above lines, so every pair of two of these scripty L lines, intersect in exactly one point. So I want to check that. Uh, so I want to outline a proof of how you would actually check this proposition. Okay, so I'm going to let L1 and L2 be lines uh, as defined so far. And they're different because I'm talking about a pair of lines. I'll just write distinct just so that we don't worry about showing that a line intersects itself in exactly one place because that's definitely not true. And so what is it we want to show? We want to show that the size of the set L1 squiggle intersect L2 squiggle is exactly one. That is every pair of lines I can imagine intersect in exactly one point. So we have to proceed here bit by bit by cases. So the first case I have to think about is let's say L1 and L2 are vertical. Okay, in which case, let's say L1 is this thing I defined before as L sub vert A1 and L2 is L sub vert A2 as I defined before. Well then, this is all the point points with x coordinate a1. This is all the points with x coordinate a2. And since these lines are different, a1 and a2 aren't the same, because otherwise they would be the same. So none of the points overlap, except that both of them have this smiley face subvert on them. So then this L1, sorry, L1 intersect L2 it is smiley face subvert. I'm not gonna do all the cases, but I'll do all the interesting cases and maybe I'll leave the other case to the homework. Uh, but let's say neither line is vertical and they have different slopes. Okay, so let's, in that case, let L1 be this L sub M1, B1, the line with slope M1 and y-intercept B1, and L2, B, L sub M2, B2, and M1 is not equal to M2, that's our assumption. So smiley face sub M1 is not equal to smiley face sub M2, so that's not part of the intersection. So we can find our intersection then by figuring out what are all the points x, y, such that y equals m1 x plus b1. And y equals 
M2X plus B2. This is the intersection. So I should specify XY is in the intersection of L1 and L2 if and only if both of those are true. So XY is in the intersection of L1 and L2 if and only if it meets the requirement to be in L1, which is that it satisfies this equation, and it meets the requirement to be in L2, which is that it satisfies this equation. So this seems like it's going to be horrendously messy, uh, but it's actually not going to be nearly as bad as you're probably anticipating. Uh, because I want to solve this system of equations, and so if xy is in the intersection, and note, the only reason I'm putting the squiggle above every line now is to remind me that these are projective lines. They're lines that have that fancy little smiley face point added to them, so they're not the regular lines uh, that are just an R2 that you would have thought of before uh, today. But if I have these two, well, y is both of these things, so then m1x plus b1 is equal to m2x plus b2. So m1x minus m2x is equal to b2 minus b1. So x times m1 minus m2 is b2 minus b1. So x is b2 minus b1 divided by m1 minus m2. Where note, I'm allowed to do this because I assumed these lines did not have the same slope. If these lines did have the same slope, well then what did I just prove? I just proved that they don't intersect at all because when I try to divide by zero, well, that doesn't go well for me. So we can do, because M1's not the same as M2. Okay, so we have this identity for X, and then, so Y is, well, I can plug it into whatever equation I want. Y is M1 times that mess. M2 plus B1. And so what I've found is these two lines intersect in at most this point, but you can also just plug this point in, and I won't do that for you, but I, I will let you if you don't believe me, plug that and that in for x and y in both of these equations, and you'll find out that it's true in both. And so, in fact, we can write down very explicitly L1 intersect L2 is exactly the singleton set of that x, that y. I guess I'll call this x naught, y naught, just so that I can specify that I'm talking about a very specific point. And so what was I trying to prove? It's worth it to take a step back and remember. I'm trying to prove that every pair of distinct lines now intersect in exactly one point. And so we've done the case where both lines are vertical, the case where neither line is vertical and the slopes are different. I'll do one more case, although I'll acknowledge I'm skipping some cases. Let's do one more case, which is neither line is vertical, but they have the same slope. And I'll call that slope that they both have M. Well, in this case, L1 intersect L2. Well, these lines are parallel, so they don't intersect if they don't have the hats, right? That was the whole thing we were fixing, was that parallel lines don't intersect. And so we've added this point. The point we added is the only point they could possibly intersect in, and indeed, these two intersect at smiley face sub M. So it remains for you uh, to do, I won't bother writing this case down, uh, but if you want to be thorough, you should check uh, one line vertical, one not vertical. 
write down exactly what the intersection is in that case. So it's good to feel good about what we've done. We have fixed this problem now. Now every pair of lines, not in R2, but in this new projective space over R, which is P2 of R, uh, which is R2 plus a few smiley face points, every pair of lines in that space now intersect in exactly one point. So are we done? Sadly, no. Because, remember we said we had this key property that every pair of points determine a unique line, but that's not true anymore. There are now pairs of points that don't determine a line at all. Now, what points don't determine a line now? Well, if M and N are different, and smiley face sub M, remember this is a point now. I added it to my plane, so I am thinking of this as an honest-to-God point, even though it doesn't look like X comma Y. Likewise, this is now an honest point. But these don't lie on a line. Whoops. Uh, so that's a problem. How are we going to fix that? Well, we want to put them on a line. Well, what line are we going to put them on? Well, as it would happen, we're going to put all the smiley faces on one line. So we're going to add one more line, which I'm going to call uncreatively L sub smiley face. And all this is is a set, is it is the set of all the smileys. which means don't forget that the vertical smiley had also better be in there. And so now there is a case proof, just like the one we just did, that I'm not going to do, but that you can do if you want, which is to check that any two points in my new space, P2 of R, now determine a unique line. So you have to check two ordinary points, two x comma y's, they lie on a unique line. And then you have to check that two smiley face points lie on a unique line. And then you have to check that a smiley face point and an x, y, those lay on exactly one line as well. But once you've done that, then you now have the entire projective plane. So I want to give you the definition of P2 of R all in one place. So namely, this is a collection of points and a collection of lines. And so I want to just summarize everything we've done so far. So let's start with the points. And remember the points, those are the things that are going to play the role of symbols on my spotted cards. Okay, and so there are three types of points. There is the set of all X and Y, where X and Y are in R, better known as R2. So all of those points, and note I didn't change those at all, they're still the same, the point 24, still the point 24. We also added in and now here in this definition, I'm going to actually call these infinity sub m for each m in r. OK, so for every possible slope, I've now added in an infinity. But again, as we saw before with the smiley faces, you can just think of this as a symbol, and that's fine. You don't have to think about this as having any connection to the infinity that we know and love. But if you want to think about it, why would anyone ever think to call this an infinity sub m? Here's one way to do it. 
So if you think about the usual real line, there's sort of two ways you can run off to infinity. I can run off in this direction, and I'll get what we usually call plus infinity. Or I could run off in this direction, and I'll get what we call minus infinity. But if we extend this to two dimensions, this no longer makes sense. Uh, because there's now a lot of other directions I could go. So for example, I could run off in this direction, and where am I going to get then? Well, if I run off in this direction, one thing we could say is that I get to infinity sub m, just index it by the slope, which is what we're doing here. That's where we quote unquote get to. Uh, from this point of view, you might actually become convinced that we don't have too many infinities. You might actually become convinced we have too few infinities, uh, because that means if we ran off forever in this direction, we would also get to infinity sub m, which maybe doesn't seem right. Uh, but also, if we took this parallel line and ran off this, we'd also end up at infinity sub m, and maybe it's not clear that I should end up at the same point if I follow these forever. So anyway, you can think about this geometrically, or you can just treat this as a dumb symbol, and I've got the set of all of these dumb symbols as part of my projective space. Okay, and lastly, we have this thing that we just called infinity subvert. Uh, so this is the way you get, or this is the place you get if you run all the way up the y-axis, uh, and follow that, then you end up with this infinity, which is in some sense perpendicular to this horizontal infinity in heavy air quotes. You can't see the heavy air quotes, but heavy air quotes around that. So these are all the points that live on P2 of R. And so what was new in terms of the points is that we added this stuff. So I'm putting in red the things we added to R2 in our traditional sense in order to get this nice new P2 of R. So the lines come in a few flavors. So we have our usual lines, L sub M B, which is the set of X, Y, such that y equals mx plus b union this infinity sub m. We have our vertical lines, which I called L sub vert a, to the set of x, y, such that x is equal to a union infinity subvert. And lastly, we have this line that I'm going to call L sub infinity, which is just the collection of infinity sub M for M in R union infinity subvert. And so what things did we have to add here? Well, we added this before our lines did not have these because, well, these weren't even points in R2, so our lines definitely didn't have these points before. Uh, I had to add this point. R2 does have vertical lines. I didn't have to add vertical lines, but I did have to add a point to every vertical line. And lastly, this whole line I had to add. So after doing all of this work, we have now fixed R2 in quotes. So it meets these requirements. Every pair of points in R2 now determine a line, and every pair of lines in R2 now intersect. So if you go back to this page, where we talked about, oh, we have this problem that parallel lines don't intersect, hooray, we have fixed that problem. So that means next time, we're going to have to fix the problem that these lines and this set of points, as defined, 
are very infinite. And I definitely don't want to make a deck of spotted cards uh, where there are uncountably many cards, and also every card has uncountably many symbols on it. I could do that if somehow I could print uncountably many cards, and on every one of the cards I could somehow fit uncountably many points, uh, but that doesn't sound very realistic. So next time, we have to fix that problem. And the way we're going to fix that problem is by replacing in everything we just did the real numbers, which are uncountable, with this field F7, which is very countable. In fact, it only has seven elements. And those are they. So next time, we're going to talk about how to interpret everything we just did over this field with seven elements, and we're also going to talk a little bit about finite fields more generally. But for now, until next time, be well.